So 2020 is going to be one of those years that will be a black stain in one's life. It started off with a pandemic that has killed over 1 million people. And then somewhere along the second quarter of the year, protests against police brutality swept all over America. Though this is documented, there is a fight happening in the giant of Africa, one that many people are not aware of. See, Nigerians are also protesting against police brutality, in particular against SARS, Nigeria's special anti-robbery squad, who have kidnapped, harassed, raped, and killed countless civilians all over the country. This in turn prompted a nationwide counter-activity to abolish the division itself in the act of protests. Based on research, SARS originated in 1992 during a mini-battle between the police and the army. As a result, crime increased in the streets of Lagos. This prompted the formation of the group by Commissioner Simeon Midenda to fight back against crime. Over the years, SARS began to lose its purpose of fighting robbery and eventually, SARS officers began to terrorize the civilians they are meant to protect. If you look all over Nigerian social media, you will see videos of stories of SARS officers engaging in human rights abuse. For some reason, SARS officers allegedly harass younger people with tattoos, dreads, fancy cell phones and those who wear name brand clothing. With all this, hashtag NSARS movement began in 2017 and has recently reached a boiling point as protests have begun to take place in multiple locations in Nigeria. Some protests have been peaceful while some others almost turned deadly. As a result, the Inspector General of Nigeria, apparently ordered by the President Buhari, announced the disbanding of the controversial division in the police force. This news was received positively amongst Nigerians, but even though it looks good at first glance, has anything been solved? The issue here is even though we're able to end SARS, there is a larger problem which is the police force itself. Police officers around the world are tasked with dealing with the worst of society and it takes mental fortitude and reasonable compensation for someone to operate on this task on a daily basis. But if there's no resource to help a police officer mentally while the same officer is being paid 90% below minimum wage, how can there be progress? A Canadian police officer's salary is at an average of $77,000 per year and an American police officer's salary is at an average of $54,000 per year. And an inspector general of police in Nigeria, the highest ranking officer earns $22,000 a year. Though it may be unfair to compare a Nigerian police officer to an officer in the Western world, one can see how the salary compares to the minimum wage of the country. Nigeria's minimum wage sits at 30,000 Naira and a constable's wage sits at just over 48,000 Naira monthly. Inventory is another distraction. The typical police officer will not have a car and few would have bulletproof vests. The mental aptitude of a lot of these officers can also be called into question. Nigerian police officers are known to practice excessive force and intimidation before investigation and crime prevention. This behavior is an indication of poor training, self-esteem issues, the need to be respected and frustration at their jobs and tasks. Even though the members of SARS will be reallocated to other positions within the police force, what's not to say that they will continue to be who they are in the new department? What is more disturbing is the president's lack of attention given to the matter. Sure, the president has been tweeting away about how dire the situation is, but he might as well tweet about how the sun rises every day because all Nigerians know what is happening. But what we do not know is how the president and the police force will aim to fix the situation. After the announcement of the abolishment of SARS, the civilians of Nigeria came out with a list of demands which does not look problematic for the police force to solve. Only time will tell if the police force heeds to the demands. In conclusion, one should respect all life. We're talking of lives of the victims and the lives of the oppressors. Maybe we should look at ourselves and try to question maybe SARS is just a representation of who we could be when our backs are against the wall. Have these officers turned to savages because the organization meant to equip and provide for them have let them down and they in turn have targeted their frustrations towards the society that they are meant to protect? Because they see the worst of Nigerian people day in and day out but have not much means to deal with the problems. So for this situation not to escalate to treacherous levels, a dialogue needs to be had, people have to be held accountable and a reform has to be conducted before it sinks the giant of Africa into a hole that it would never get itself out of. Hashtag NSARS. What do you think?